All right, so we are back again for our uh, third session. Yeah, we're going to start off with his uh, military career this time. The one that I'm excited for, <laughs> of course, the martial arts too. Coach Danny. Guru Danny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sipu Danny. Uh, let's, uh, first question I want to ask is, what inspired Danny Terrell to join the military? Um... Well, my father had been in the military, and I was, of course, young, uh, idealistic, um, patriotic, and I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do as far as for into life as a career. Uh, so I figured, well, if I went into the military, at least I would, I could get some training in something that I could use when I come out. Uh, I could serve my country, um, and that was really the biggest thing. Was I? I didn't want to. I didn't want to continue in education at the moment. Like university, college. Yeah, like university or college or anything like that. After so I, I after, wanted. Okay. Yeah. So and uh, I knew that it was expensive, and I knew that it was going to cost my parents a lot of money uh, to go, and they were willing to pay the money for me to go to, but uh, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go to college and not do something with it. So I selected to go in the military. And uh, I looked at all four branches and I went and ended up going into the Air Force because they offered the best package as far as for guaranteeing me something that was what I wanted to do versus any of the other ones. Oh, okay. So the inspiration did come from somebody in the family, which is your dad. Right? Yeah. My, uh, what was he doing? My, my f in the military? Yeah. What, what was his? Was he, he Army? Was, yeah, he was in the Army. He, he had Wars. served in World War II. Oh, wow. Uh, Respect to him. Served in the, in the, in the Philippines yes. when he was in, in uh, World War II. Your father. Uh, um, he never really talked about his experiences. Um, mm -hmm. He just mainly talked about it was tough. And uh, there were things that, of course, after I became an adult, I had served and when I came back, some of the things that I talked to him about, he had gone through some of the same experiences and stuff. So it, uh, oh, go ahead. So it, 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 I guess there was a little bit of a, uh, an adult bonding that happened because of that, you know, so. Yeah, uh, that's good. That's good. It's good that he was around. Yeah. Now, how was your parents' reaction when you told them that you wanted to join the military? Oh, uh, I think initially my father was very disappointed. Oh, wow. Not because I wanted to join the military, but because I wasn't going to college. That was sounds like your parents, right? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> well, they were both educators, you know. Oh yeah, and uh, and that was important to him. But like I said, I, I didn't I didn't know what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't want him to have to spend a whole bunch of money for me to go to college and not do yeah. something with it, you know, or, or yeah. end up you know failing or. or mm -hmm getting out of it because uh, it wasn't what I wanted. So right. I went in the military and I knew that going into the military that I could end up getting a GI Bill and that would help cover expenses whenever I did go to college, so. Uh, yeah. Now, how long did you serve in the military? I was actually not very long, to be honest with you. Uh, I went in uh, with a four-year contract uh, Isn't that like how that is nowadays? Same thing. Yeah, they uh, still they still do four years, four years yeah. six years. You can if do a six year. Yeah. You can do a six year contract. Right. But uh, uh, I went in with a four year contract, and there were some things that changed within that once I was in, um, and so that ended up changing some of the things that I ended up doing. So I I I, I had a contract to be a, a helicopter mechanic. 
Okay. And the reason uh, one, I was inter interested in mechanics. I was had a high aptitude for it. Um, so I said, well, okay, there's helicopters in South Louisiana at the time with the oil field. Oh. So here was a career move that I could go learn about helicopters and then come back yeah. and use it here. Uh, That's so, a good smart move. So when I went in, the helicopter career field was full. So they said, you can do something else, choose something else. So I chose pararescue. And, and that, speaking of the pararescue, that's still new at that time, or is it already around since the era of World War II? Yeah, no, uh, pararescue started uh, in 64, but it was an offshoot of things that had happened with uh, down pilots and being able to get to down pilots and stuff so and doing rescues. 64 was? Is when, when they started having the, the special operations unit of the Air Force. So, I didn't know that. That's awesome. So uh, this I'm is during. I'm sorry, y'all. Having okay. a brain fart. During Vietnam era, 1964. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I applied for that, and I figured, well, let's see what happens. And so I trained as pararescue for a while, and then it's a, a unique thing. Uh, there's some, I, I had some odd things happen. Um, I don't know if anybody else, as a matter of fact, I was talking with somebody um, about six months ago now in uh, San Antonio who was uh, an advocate for uh, people with the military. He served 20 years, he got out, he's working out as an advocate. Uh, he said, yeah, some of the things that I was telling him about, he said, yep, I've seen it, I've heard it. Uh, not a whole lot, but there's some things that happen from time to time. And I was one, I guess. So anyway, I, I trained in pararescue. Oh, quick question. Did you do basic training first yes. before you jumped into yeah. the PJ? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, is yeah. that what they call it, PJ? PJs, PJs yeah. yeah PJs. So yeah, yeah, you have to do your basic training first. Okay. So I did okay. that. And then when you go to... How long did you do the basic training for? Basic training was six weeks. That was, that was easy. Wow. So it was easy. not a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then when I went to PJs, uh, you had to swim. And I, man, I don't remember. I want to say... Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you, you had, about you the had, training stuff. You had, to, you had to run two miles in a certain time. You had to swim a mile or two miles and you had to be able to do it in, in a certain amount of time. Oof. You had to, uh, there, Tell was, me. there was several, there was some physical things that you had to do in order to even get into the program. So I did all that stuff and got into the program and from there we, we didn't march anywhere, we ran everywhere. <laughs> Double time everything. Wow. Uh, and then all the... Rock sack and everything. Yeah. Uh, it was oh, how many people were in your uh, the training with you at that time? You know, Johnny, I, I don't I don't remember specifically. I want to say there was like um, seventy five or eighty guys at the time. That's when, a lot. When we first went in, wow. uh, most everybody got washed out yeah, in a very short it. period of time. Yeah, uh, it's it's a constant. Uh, Weeding out, weeding out of people. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, special and, forces. And that, and and it's not that they were weren't good people. You know, sometimes you just can't handle the, either the physical aspect or you can't handle the mental aspect. And that's most of it is mental. mental yeah. Can you uh, can you you can go further than you think you can? You mm. can, and some people just can't. That's all. You know, there's nothing wrong with right. they're still good people. You right. know. Not, it's not for everybody, by any means. Well, that's, that's the reason why they call them special forces, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a special specialty. <laughs> so in, anyway, uh, I was going to the training, and we were getting into doing uh, medical stuff. That's the last part of the training. We were getting into doing that. Uh, we did water survival, did jungle survival. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Did uh, yeah, survival uh, stuff. You know, repelling and all that kind of stuff. That's funny. And we were getting ready to 
going into the medical stuff, and we had, uh, I, I don't remember, six weeks left or whatever. Um, and the medical part is the last thing that you do. And someone says, Carol, you wear glasses, don't you? I said, yeah, I've been wearing glasses since we started. And so you have to have a minimum of 20-20 vision. So go get an eye test. So I did an eye test. I Wait. failed the eye test. Huh? And so they booted me out of PJs. So, Whoops. wait, so I go to Shepherd Air Force Base. What year was and this? Then this? Sorry. Uh, 72. So, I go to Shepherd Air Force Base. They cross train me over into uh, aircraft maintenance because I originally wanted uh, helicopters. Mm -hmm. okay. That field was closed, so I took the PJs. Oh. Provided that I pass everything and all that, so no one ever said anything with the glasses until about six weeks in. So I've been <laughs> doing all this training all this time, and of course, well, I got great training. Oh know. my goodness! Uh, so they washed me out because of my my, my eyes. So anyway, I do a, a short course in uh, uh, turboprop, and then they send me to Little Rock Air Force Base. I'm in Little Rock for about three weeks, and then they pull me off of the, the unit. I was uh, 314 OMS, uh, or TAC rather, and at the time, because they switched over to OMS. Anyway, uh, they pull me off, put me in a hydraulics unit, worked in a hydraulics unit for about three weeks, and then started doing tactical stuff. And I, everything I did from that point on was all pararescue stuff. But you're not in pararescue anymore. I'm not in pararescue anymore. <laughs> so go on. It's, yeah, it's an odd thing. It's odd. Um, I did three CIA missions, um, Blackbirds, unmarked aircraft, civilian clothes, um, being support and I was there as a no. pair rescue stuff. When you said CIA stuff, like where were you at those points of time? Are you allowed to talk about that? Some of it, yeah. All right, um, can we get into that? Well, the first. Well, let's go. Let's go back to the military training. And, yeah. And, well, and, oh, okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> Jumping. I don't want to jump off. Like, yeah. Well, it, like I said, we'll it's, about it's kind of a convoluted thing because. Uh, Wait. Uh, you know, most people go in and you. Train. You train, you do what you do, and you, you move on or whatever. And I got kind of bounced around in some odd stuff. Now, this was in that four year you were there? Uh huh. Wow. So. You must have some kind of skill that they needed you for. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, but I, I ended up doing that. So that's where I ended up, you know, I told you I've been to 34 countries. Yes. So most of my training was done. But most of my travel was done through the through the service okay. in that short period of time. Wow! Uh, yeah, reconnaissance so and stuff I, like that. Yep. While in the training. So, well, you're already done with PJ. Training. I was done with that, and they were using me. Okay, that's what I wanted those, to know. Those aspects, okay. not as an aircraft mechanic. <laughs> using you as a as so a, I did army support. I did naval support. Um, I did. Uh, I didn't do anything with the Marines. Never, never flew the Marines. But with uh, three, I did three different, three different things where I was doing support for the Navy. And I'm like, why am I with the Navy? Yeah. And so I'm actually doing water support. So you had time diving. So I was diving. That's where you tell the story about. Oh, yeah, I got to tell about the story about the diving training. Gotta tell us about that. <laughs> tell them about it. <laughs> Which aspect? Oh, oh, the one when you're uh, out there in the waters in the sea. Oh, when we did water survival, uh, of course you, you you do all your swimming and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a three days, five men in a three man life raft. That one, yes, that one. Uh, that one you told me before. We had a pint of water between the three of us. 
Oh. And nothing to eat. And you basically you, you basically sit out there for three days and not knowing where you are, what's going on. Yeah, in the middle <laughs> of the ocean. Uh, yeah, two men were in the water the whole time. Two men in the middle of the ocean. Two, two people in the water, two three the water. three people in the raft. And you in the raft. And so every couple of hours you rotate, two other people go in the water, those people get in the raft. And oh my gosh. So it's been three days. Yeah, doing that. Was it the summertime? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so but then again that is But you hot. still it well, but you still get cold. You know yeah. you don't you don't think about it. You the the Gulf of Mexico is about eighty degrees. Yes. Okay, so yeah. If you're, if the outside temperature is at 95, 80 feels good, and so at night the temperature drops a little bit, yeah. and you're wet all the time, and yeah, so yeah. Hy- you yeah, can actually it. become hypothermic. Yes. You know, so we're, we're rotating back and forth, and yeah. of course, then you get you're thirsty, you're hungry, mm-hmm. you're irritable, <laughs> you're <laughs> you're rubbing on each other. It's pretty miserable. <laughs> Then you know, then the salt begins to dry, or excuse me, the water evaporates. So you have salt. The salt's yeah. all over it. It begins yeah. to encrust on you. It's like when we get the beach getting a tan, and salt dries on you. Oh gosh, and so you're burning yourself. And yeah, and so yeah, it's, it was pretty miserable. Oh. Uh, and somebody's know. rubbing up on you. And you're, yeah, and, you're, and, <laughs> and then we had one. One of the guys was that was it. He was done. Um, that's it. I'm not getting back in the water. Oh yeah, you are. <laughs> Cause I'm getting out. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was interesting. <laughs> Dumped them back out into the yeah, water. <laughs> Threw them back in the water. And then, uh, <laughs> are you friends with each other to this day? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Speaking of that, are you friends with any of the uh, former tr- PJ trainers that you train with? No, I haven't. No, the guys that I train with, I mean, because I got washed out, I didn't do anything with them. Oh yeah, right. I was. There was actually uh, another gentleman, um, Michael Williams, that was pretty much doing the same thing as I was, but he he got washed out before I did, okay. uh, and he was already in when I came into Little Rock, and so I was uh, pretty much working under him. Oh. But uh, yeah, it was kind of an odd thing. It's just strange how they had you bouncing around thinking that you're not a PJ no more. Well I, well, I wasn't officially, you know, but then officially I, I did a lot of things that but you did PJ uh, stuff with them. But officially I was not doing the stuff that they had me doing. Right, because you're doing CIA and... Uh, well, yeah, some. There was three, I did five CIA missions. I mean, but, I mean yeah. in general, like as in it but, wasn't related to PJ stuff. Right, right. right. So, uh, but that's feel cool. That's, that's, that's but it was cool. odd. And, you know, but, then, oh, I was going to ask, did you say, like doing it, though? Yeah, I did. Okay. But uh, I was also, I was, I was young, and I was naive. How old were you? I was 18 at the time, 18, 19. And, yeah. You came doing the CIA stuff. Yeah. Uh, I went that's pretty to... pretty cool. Uh, I went, the first mission that I did... Uh, I never knew about this. <laughs> was... Uh, we ran guns into uh, uh, Chile. Uh, wow. I was in uh, Howard Air Force Base in uh, the Philippines. And they, well, they sent me to Howard Air Force Base in the Philippines as a TDY, temporary duty assignment. Not as a PJ? No. Well, I wasn't a PJ, so I was not as a PJ. I was just doing PJ stuff. I need to get so, that yeah, out of my head. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, I, they sent me down to Howard Air Force Base. I was there for three days. They called me in and said, okay, we got a mission, did a briefing, uh, leaving at, I don't know, nine o'clock at night, going, going wherever. Uh, you have in-flight orders, which means that you won't know where you're going, what you're doing until you get in flight. So I- Oh, so it's like a secret mission. Yeah. So wow. get it, get out to the to the flight line where we're supposed to get on our bird. Hold on, hold on. Let me soak this up for a second. You're 18 years old. Yeah. Doing CIA stuff. Yeah. 
with no clue what's going on. That's like James Bond stuff. James Bond, so, baby. <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> so I'm we, sorry. No, no. I'm having my moment with you right now. But that what you're saying is like for me to soak it in and say, at that age, you're doing James Bond stuff. Yeah, but I was, yeah. That so is I, cool, Danny. <laughs> I was young and dumb. Then. No, but I think it's cool. <laughs> so we I get out to the flight line, and of course the whole crew is out there. And there's a seven-man crew. We uh, get on a plane and go to get on a plane. So this is a Blackbird. It's an unmarked plane. It's painted black. It's unmarked. It's got no decals or anything on it. Um, oh my God. We get on the plane. We take off. We 30 minutes out. We do in-flight orders. So we open the orders. What? You said you went to Blackbird? Plane? Blackbird, yes. It's a, Those? It was, well, a, a blackbird means that it's a blacked out bird. Okay, so, so it's not, it's not yeah, one of it's, the... It's, uh, it's whatever aircraft that we were on. It happens to be a, a C-130. Okay. But All right. it was paint, solid, painted solid black yeah. uh, with no insignia. Right. Which means that there's no markings as to it's with the United States or anything like that. Whereas all other birds have US flag on the US flag on it, has a tail n a number and everything right. on it. So, so if it gets down, you're yeah. on your own. Right. So oh. wait, so yeah, so we open in flight orders saying that we're going to uh, uh, Chile, uh, Santiago, and there's a cargo that's in the back. We don't know what's in the cargo or anything because everything's sealed up, but uh, they had clothes on board the plane, and we took our uniforms off, put on civilian clothes, okay. put all forms of ID, everything in a box, sealed off the box. Mm. That was, we went to a certain vector, they pitched it out of the plane, and it was picked up. And we went on into San Diego and brought the stuff that we were bringing into San Diego. Come to find out later on, it was guns, ammunition, we did, flew in with that, met some guys on a dirt runway. <laughs> Sounds like a drug deal going on. No. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Dirt, dirt runway, unloaded that, got into some uh, vehicles. They brought us into a town near. Quick question. Were you strapped or anything? Any guns on you to protect yourself? Any weapons? Yes. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Yes. Like, you know how you say civilians, sometimes they don't lay yet. Yeah, no, we, we had uh, had an M16. Okay. Had a 45. Okay. So uh, you were still that way. Yeah, some kind of protection. And uh, we dropped off that equipment. They took us in the, into the town. We went into the uh, basement area of a hotel. So we got into a hotel from the basement, <laughs> spent the night there, went back into the basements. Stayed in the basement for about two hours. And then they came with another truck, picked us up, and went back. Picked up our bird, flew back to uh, somewhere in Nicaragua. Picked up some more guns, and then we're back into San Diego. We threw three flights in the side of San Diego with that. These are all US made weapons? Yeah. Oh, yeah. To Chile? Yeah. But you don't know who is it? It was, yeah. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. So that there was a coup that overthrew was, the government of Chile in, in, 19, in August of 1973. I, I was going to ask you, didn't Chile went to war with UK? Uh, Argentina. Falkland. Is that the Falkland Islands? Falkland Islands, yeah. Well, that's Argentina. That was, uh, yeah. Or is it Chile? Yeah. No, it's Argentina, down to okay, wrong Chile. Place. Chile's on the Pacific side, Argentina is on the, uh, but yeah, that, uh, but it's August of 73 was, there was a coup that overthrew the government of Chile and we were bringing That's some right. guns and stuff in they, they didn't have after that was, had happened and everything, so, uh, anyway, wow. that was, that was my first, uh, venture, and this was something that was, wait, awesome. wait, so it means those guns that you delivered, I don't know what they Help were used for. Help that coup? No, the coup had already happened. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So, okay. I'm trying to get this right here. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, wow. 
one, one of the other things that happened. Now, how did you guys the, feel? How many of you guys were with? There were seven of us on the plane. Seven? Yeah. How did you guys feel about that? Like, not knowing where you're going, not knowing what you're doing. I was excited at the time. Okay, okay. Yeah, was, that's you know, when you're part of your thing, young and dumb. Yeah, I was okay. young and dumb. I was excited. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. yeah, I think I would too. I'd be like, so, doing some CIA mission. <laughs> but I, I, it's funny, I didn't know that at the time. Um, that it was CIA. Yeah. Okay. You thought uh, it was military. I ended up with uh, Air Force. And be, because of those things coming up, uh, I guess, a backtracking. Uh, when I look back, there were signs along the way saying that this is some odd things that are happening. But young and dumb, but, you know, uh, I got a top secret clearance. Uh, yeah, you hear that word, you're like, ooh. A lot of people get a secret clearance. I got a top secret clearance. Mm -hmm. I had been trained, got partially trained, got removed off of that, and I ended up doing those types of jobs anyway mm -hmm. with uh, PJ type stuff. Uh, before, and, and I didn't realize this until after uh, probably the third or fourth time, uh, prior to being sent down to Howard Air Force Base, <clears throat> I got called in to have my, uh, have my teeth checked. And I was like, that's strange, that's odd. You know, with, okay, they tell you when to go get your teeth checked or cleaned or whatever. So I go to the dentist. They changed the fillings in my teeth. I had three or four fillings at the time. They changed the fillings in my teeth. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that was kind of odd to me, but whatever. Ended up doing the mission. Once I got back. Going uh, to Chile. Yeah, going to Chile. Once I got back, it was about two weeks after I got back, I got a thing to go back to see the dentist. And I was like, I, I went to the dentist four weeks ago. <laughs> Five weeks ago, whatever it was, it says, well, I got to go back again. Well, you got a card, turn out you got go, to gotta go see the dentist. So I go to the dentist and he checks my teeth. He said, well, we're going to grind some of you. You got a filling that we want to grind down. So they ground on the filling or whatever, and I went on about my business. Didn't think, again, young and dumb, idealistic. Mm -hmm. uh, went on back to doing the stuff that I was doing. Uh, Got another mission, oh. sent on a TDY. Mm -hmm. uh, got orders to go to the TDY. The next day, go to, go get, a, get another car to go to the dentist. And I was like, I went to the dentist three months ago. So I went to the dentist, they changed my fillings. Left, went, did a CIA mission in Holland. Another Blackbird mission. Have no idea what it was we were doing there. Have no idea why we were there. How many people were there this time? Uh, there was two birds, uh, two so birds. so fourteen people. So this one must involve more shipment. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what was in the containers. Guns. <laughs> I have no idea what was in the containers. To this day. To this day. Wow. I have no idea. Sure, there ain't no, no Kia phones. <laughs> no. Ericsson phones. And it was, uh, now we, and when we went, when I went to, to Holland, uh, we, again, Blackbirds, but we flew in in the evening. We got there, it was just about dusk. you know what dust. city you were in, at least? I have no idea what city I was in. Or province. I have no idea where I was. All I know is that we were in Holland somewhere. In the city or in like outskirts of the city? No, we were in the outskirts. We were, we were on a, a small uh, uh, airfield. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a military airfield and it wasn't like an international type airport or anything. It was like, like more like an industrial type uh, working airfield or something like that okay. that was used. <laughs> I was about to say, did you pick up some tulips while you were there? No, not at all. <laughs> Um, you got some beautiful tools. So we, <laughs> so we flew into Holland and made this drop, and we ended up staying there for two nights, uh, doing really doing nothing. Hmm. Um, they had us in bivouac in a in tents at the end of the runway, and said just don't come out of your tents, just stay there. So we wow slept and did some reading and. Yeah. You know, just hung out. One boring trip. Huh? One very boring trip, but it was 
So anyway, I get back to the States, mm -hmm. and two weeks after I get back to the States, go see the dentist. <laughs> Again? What is up with this? Well, the, I think there's something with this. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I, I don't know this for sure. This is my opinion, strictly my opinion, is that if something happens and something goes down, how, how can you identify you identify through people's teeth. Oh. And so they're changing dental records. They're changing your dental records. That's, the only, that's my opinion. There is I, some... I did, I did, I did five missions and... CIA. My, I, five CIA missions, okay. yes. Um, I did, um, uh, and every one of them, I had either my teeth were ground or I had fillings replaced in my mouth either just before or prior to every one of those missions. So that means they're purposely... That's Johnny, it's my opinion. That, 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 no, it's not, no, that's, that sounds you know, just about... And at the time... It, a spy-ish, I mean, network it, to me, to me it just seemed odd at the time, but you know, I'm talking to a couple of my buddies and man, and I think they're using you guys, the younger ones, because they yeah, know that it's easy. Yeah, you're young and dumb, and I right. just think you go do whatever that you want to do. Right. Because right, so. you want to get your pins and stripes. So, yeah, I, I did those things. I volunteered. Anytime something came up, they said, hey, we need to volunteer to do something. Yeah, I'll go. Oh, wow. I'll okay. go. Okay. And so I ended up doing lots of traveling. Like I said, 34 countries in, in three years' time. Sheesh. That all, but you, then, five of it was CIA. Yeah, five of those, yeah. So one was in Chile, another one was in Holland, and what was the other thing? Yeah. Oh, no, you said you did two in Chile. Yeah, I did two in Chile. One in but Holland. no, but that was, I went into Chile twice, but that was the same. Same thing, same, same, same mission. Yeah. So the other uh, three yeah, were the, the other, other countries. Uh, or are you not allowed to talk about those? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Vietnam. Okay. Well, what was um, it? Okay. No, go ahead. You know, I'll... Tell you something odd about, and I don't know if we talked about that before or not. No, we never. But uh, never touched on anything with Vietnam. Not yet. Not until today. Um, Just talked about training and getting shipped out there. Officially. Um, oh yeah, speak. When did you uh, in, for Vietnam? When did you deploy to, to Vietnam? I went, I went to well, I went to the Philippines uh, in seventy five. At at the pullout when Vietnam when they were getting ready to pull out of Vietnam. When Nixon called out to, well, I'm I'm just recollecting from my history. When he when said to start when they re winding it down or something like that. No, the so they had that they had the wind down and all, but we were still in Vietnam. Yeah. And they attacked the embassy in Saigon. The Tet Offensive, right? No, this that was in '68. Oh yeah, '68. Uh, sorry. And then they so they attacked the. Uh, the embassy, and we started pulling everybody out of the out of the embassy. Oh, during the time whenever they were doing the evacuation. Yes. Okay. Now so that's that's it. That was the, that's the cool. final pull. Final pull. Okay. You were involved so, with that one. Yes. Okay. So, officially, the last day that we were in Vietnam was April thirtieth, mm -hmm. nineteen seventy-five. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's the one that's been all over the news, and right? The the last day that I was in Vietnam was May 5th. And, wow. not, and not just me, I mean there were flight crews that were going in and coming back out, yeah. still pulling people out of Vietnam. But officially, there was no American. So you were pulling no out. We were still going in. May 5th was my last day. You're still Vietnam. pulling people out. Yeah. Even civilians. Oh yeah, that's what most of the people who we were playing out were civilians. Oh, okay, most of the South. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they had the they had the well, part of the thing was called the uh, the baby lift, where they were taking babies out of the uh, right out of the adoption homes and the nurseries yeah, and stuff. I remember seeing videos. They were doing that. Yeah, the C five A C five A went down, killed everybody that was on one. Um, we had a C-130, that was... Uh, now, this is when you were first deployed out yeah. there? 
Or is this like a second or third time on older? No, this is, this is at, during the pullout. They sent me to the Philippines, and from the Philippines I went. Okay. You know, we right. were actually hopping back and forth. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, I'm getting where you're at now, okay. And pulling people out. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, it's, that was, in, that was in, yeah, so May, May 5th of 75 was the last day I was there. And then on May... In Saigon, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't remember, May 12th, May 15th. Oops. Uh, Cambodia captured the merchant ship, the Mayaguez. Is that the one you mentioned about? Yeah. So. Yeah, we went in and got the crew. You were in the Philippines the at that time. I had, we had finished in Vietnam, mm -hmm. so we were up sitting in the Philippines, yes. Okay. And then the merchant ship. Uh, the American merchant ship? Yeah, okay. the Mayaguez the was, Ma was captured by Cambodia. Khmer Rouge? And, uh, yeah. Okay. And, or that was the beginning of that. Yeah, yeah, but they were already there at that time. Yeah. They were already established. Right, Pol Pot okay. was already. Right, yeah. He wasn't, he didn't show his craziness yet. Shortly afterwards, though. Yeah, yeah. that's when my dad uh, got into all that stuff, my dad and my So cousin, anyway, we, we went cousin. in, took some, excuse me, you know, and I said earlier, I never did anything with the Marines, but yeah, we took some Marines in to capture the Marines, we went in and brought, I don't remember how many Marines, but there were probably 30, maybe maybe 40 Marines that went in, uh, went in as support behind it, and we ended up losing, I think, 18 Marines, but we got the crew. Wow, 18, wow. We got the crew, mm -hmm. and we got the ship. Not uh, any got the, back out. the crew, no one died? No, we got the whole crew back. Wow, yeah. good job. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm so pretty sure those people thought you were like a heaven sent. <laughs> I can only imagine. I don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that was interesting. Uh, mm. Damn, 18. At when the war is already over. The war isn't ever over for the military. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, right. yeah, I was part of that. I did, uh, so, go ahead. I was gonna say, now, those 18 people that were Marines, or just mixed? Yeah, there were 18 Marines, okay. yeah, that was part of the contingency going. I think it was 18, wow. that was wrong. That, that, was a, that, was, that was a tough mission. Uh, so, so, can you explain to me, do you guys were taking your little boat, your boats out there into the area to get in, or you uh, helicoptering it uh, to do the rescue mission? We flew in in a 130 okay, and so did, a, and did a, uh, a drop from the 130. Drop from the 130 into yeah. enemy territory. Yeah. Okay. Oof. And then. Uh, That's tough. Yeah. No uh, one, no eyes out there to help if you're surrounded. Uh, well, we had, we had birds in the air. Okay, so you did have some birds. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but still, it's. The, the total logistics of it, Johnny, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't think I ever knew. Okay. Uh, all, all I know is I was on the ground with them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Just wanted to save somebody. Yeah. And we, I mean, we got. Save people. I we got, we got the Marines back. Uh, okay. Except for maybe one or two of the bodies and then. Uh, diplomatically, they got them back after that, I believe, okay. if I remember right. That's good. Uh, just uh, going on memory now. Uh, some of that was pretty much a blur because it's. Uh, okay. The chaos of, of when it's happening, you know, don't know every, I don't remember every aspect of it. Right, right. And, and I think in a lot of ways, I, I shut a lot of it out, closed the door, and I, I get you. I get. Uh, I, I totally. Understand. I get it. I yeah. understand. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. chaos. You don't want to remember that. You know. It. I think what people, a lot of people, don't ever talk about, is um, the fear. Oh yeah. Um, it's. 
you know? <laughs> yeah. So, and it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when they dropped, you guys were in like a field in the jungle or just near near a river or where the boat was? Um, if you can no. remember. We, we just, we went in as a drop. Um, um, some of the Marines, the Marines, I don't remember how all the Marines got in, Josh. I think maybe some of them went on a boat. Okay. Uh, we did an airdrop, we uh, parachuted in. Okay. Uh, so I think there was, it was a, a couple of different contingencies, uh, three different groups maybe. Okay. From different strategic points. Okay. To All, go right. In. All right. All uh, right. But I don't. I don't know. You don't remember. I don't remember that. what the specifics of that was. Okay. No. That's fine. That's yeah. Okay. Well, now, anything? Now you rescued. Excuse me. Who we ate? <laughs> but uh, I was gonna say when you brought them back to the we Philippines. Got, we had one of the boat. Okay. Got them back to the boat. We got the boat, and then we were. To leave with the boat, and of course we had a uh, air support until the boat got underway. It was able to go. Okay. Oh, so they went back to do whatever it is that they were doing. Once I, you got I'm not, I, don't, I don't remember where they went. I don't. I wasn't involved with that. No, no I mean uh, like you. Once you got the boat back, got the civilians back, they did. They went on. Yeah, their, they, they went they, their way. They went. Yeah. Okay. I thought you brought them back to the Philippines and then I, I, no, I helped them. I don't know where they went. To, okay. To be honest with you, okay. we, we did that. They got back on the boat, uh, and we went back to the Philippines. Okay. All right. And my debrief was based upon what we had and what we had done. Uh, and you, and they yeah. don't even know who you guys are to this day, then. No. Wow. No, they they don't know who I am or anything, by any means. Yeah. Well, I pray to God that they see this video. No. <laughs> well. Uh, the the, yeah. So anyway, we got that. And that was. I'm pretty sure they're probably wondering who you guys. <laughs> I mean, I would be if I stayed. Maybe so. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, I did have. Uh, I had a young lady contact me. Gosh, this is probably maybe twenty years ago now. Uh, a young lady that contacted me about uh, her mother. I had picked up and rescued um, several ladies with young kids. Not the Vietnamese stuff? Uh, Vietnamese. In New Iberia? I'm sorry. No, in, Go ahead. When I was, when we were pulling people out of Vietnam mm -hmm. and just in talking with them about some of the stuff. You know, trying to communicate with people and make them feel better or whatever. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a scary situation for everybody. Oh, I know. Um, oh, yeah. They're scared for their lives. We're taking shots. Uh, mortars are coming in. Uh, this is in Saigon. Yeah. Okay. We're picking people up. And then. Uh, so you were at Embassy, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, Lady contacted me about the fact that I was, she was a little girl and she, how she got my name, how she got my number or whatever, I, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of blown away that I got contacted on it. Oh. But she just wanted to okay. say thank you. Okay. Which was, that was pretty cool, you know. Awesome. Uh, Do you know where she's at right now? Nope. Just, no. Not even um, whereabouts? Or? No, and I, you know, she told me her name, but I don't remember. Uh, it, it's it, for a couple of reasons as we said that just to say thank you for having yes. saved them you know, so yeah I don't know definitely um, that's an honorable thing what you did well it, it was what we were tasked to do you know it's no that's I didn't say okay hey I want to go do that I mean no I mean like as an, as an honorable thing like yeah picking up the phone and talking oh, yeah. to her you know you didn't have to do that no um uh, yeah, we yeah. got that. And then uh, when I got when I was out of the service, uh, I got released on an early release, 
because Vietnam was now shut down and uh, I was in uh, Crete. Oh, quick question. How long did you stay out in Vietnam during the whole time when you were done in Vietnam? How long? Um, in Vietnam itself? Yeah. Um, All the missions? Two weeks. Wow. Two weeks. Man, you saw that much action. Home for goodness. Um, we were there to pull people out, you know? Right. Uh, and then, of course, the stuff that happened with Cambodia happened right. after that, you know. So it was like two separate things, but it just happened in a very short period of time. Oh, yeah. And it just happened to be there to. Yeah. Uh, you were still like, what, 18, 19? That was in 75. So, yeah, I was, what, 19? Wow. Uh, yeah, 20. 75 was 20. Um, and from, I don't remember what happened from there, where we went, but uh, in, where did I go from there? Well, I'm back stateside, but I did another mission after, after that. Um, gosh. I don't know. I don't like that. So you did about two weeks, and then you did at least three missions. Or? I was no every day. We were flying in and out every day. Okay, so you're doing it every day. Yeah. Okay. Every so day. It was just one mission. It was like oh no, so we were going back. We were going back and forth. Consistent. Uh, uh, three to five times a day. So you constantly and we saw did it every day for yeah. yeah. And we did it every day for about two weeks. Hey. Um, and then again, officially, we were out. May 30th, but we continued to go in. Uh, had a C-130 got blown up. They got mortars hit it, hit the uh, fuel tanks and exploded. Uh, we got some of the guys out of that. Didn't mm -hmm. get everybody, but got some of the guys. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have any badly burned. buddies that you went over there and you were still buddies to this day with in Vietnam or anything like that? Um, Not just in the military. No. Um, I've got a couple of buddies that I was, um, I have one that I stay in pretty constant contact with, okay. uh, but he wasn't there. Uh, okay. And then... Uh, like I said, he wasn't in Vietnam? Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah, he stayed, he did some other stuff, but he stayed stateside now, so. Okay. But, okay. Uh, and then, I, my gosh, where did I go? We did a lot of stuff in did South you America, in? Nicaragua, uh, Africa, Colombia, okay. uh, uh, Guatemala. Oh wow! Yeah. Like fighting or just regular you know, missions? Bring, bringing stuff in. Okay, bringing stuff. I was in. there. I, I was there as support. Uh, but this is after the Vietnam War, yeah, and yeah, you already had combat experience, and yeah. So okay. I was I was there more as. Um, just support, just support. So I, I carried a weapon and supported and watched and you know, wow. would take off again. Yeah. Um, and then I went to, they sent me to uh, Crete in the Mediterranean. Oh, off wow. Of, uh, 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 yeah. I was in Isn't uh, that Greece? Yeah. Su yeah. It's a beautiful Suda, island. Yeah. I was in Suda Bay, Crete, oh. which is a military, uh, military, which is a, a naval installation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was there, they were doing some, uh, some type of diving exercises, uh, and I was in the water to help support the diving exercises as a, as safety backup. Okay. So I spent most of my day swimming. <laughs> in a nice little beach. Well, the other, the other guy, no, it wasn't a nice little beach. It was in a. Uh, oh, okay. I thought it was. It was Greece, no, you know, known it for was, the nice. Now they had some nice beaches, but. Yeah. Uh, but this one didn't have that. Huh? No. <laughs> Unfortunately. No. Uh, I spent most of I said not, I don't say most of my time. I spent a lot of my time sitting in my hotel on a balcony, overlooking a um, a small dock and where the boats were, fishing boats were parked, and watching this guy rebuild part of the cabin and the cabin door 
on this little boat doing everything by hand. And that was interesting. Sat there, watched him. You know, had wow. some, had, a, had an arched cabin and had an arched door and arched windows in the cabin. He rebuilt that whole piece of the, and he's doing everything with hand tools. And I sat there watching him do that. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Crespo. Uh, other than that, I was swimming as safety support for Navy divers, which is, isn't that a crazy sort of thing? We got, we got Navy divers, and I'm Air Force. Are these Navy SEALs or are these just Navy divers? No, they were just Navy divers. Okay. And I said, you're, you're the Navy. Why am I here to support the Navy? Yeah, it's, it's some, there's some really strange convoluted things that I did while I was there. But you train as a PJ, they kicked you out. Yep. But they use you as a PJ yep. throughout your missions, yep. except for the CIA stuff. Yep. And then they send you to all these other stuff, yep. not dealing with PJ stuff, but for other branches of the yep. military. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, I, so I had, a, I had some unique experiences. They needed you, know? you in all these special places. I don't know, man. It's some, <laughs> and uh, my, my buddy that I still you know what? with to today, uh, you know, he was all, what's the deal? They send you all over the place. They don't send me anywhere. Because you and probably I, didn't complain. You know, so, I, well, I volunteered. Anytime something came up, I said, yeah, I'll go. That's I'll probably go. why. I'll go. That's why. <laughs> you made so, it easy for them. 